Greetings and welcome friends, I'm Ash, and today I would like to give you a hand with Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, an incredibly deep and complex CRPG that gives you the freedom to make some truly wild and creative builds. However, this sort of freedom does come at a cost, and that cost is accessibility. Unless you're a veteran of the genre, figuring out what to do and how to do it can be quite a daunting task. So in an effort to help you get started off on the right foot, allow me to share with you some of the key tricks and strategies I uncovered throughout my very, very lengthy playthrough. Without further ado, let us begin. Row Trader has a large array of skills that will help you increase your combat capabilities, give you access to new dialogue options, or even just open up new areas to explore. However, there are far too many of these skills for a single character to master, so make sure to specialize so you're amazing at only a couple of them rather than simply mediocre at all of them. The important thing to note here is that you are almost always able to use your companion's skill levels when resolving skill checks. So even if your main character has the charisma of an old crusty sock, you'll still be able to talk your way through situations if you have a companion with plenty of persuasion. As such, make sure to have a good spread of skills across all of your characters as this will give you the most options. As you level up in Rogue Trader, you'll be given the ability to acquire a plethora of unique abilities and perks, so much so that it might be hard to figure out which ones to take. In order to help you out, the game will always highlight a couple of options it deems important for your type of build. Do not blindly follow these suggestions. While they are never actively bad, these suggestions will often ignore powerful synergies and class-based abilities, especially for psychers. For whatever reason, the recommendations will never suggest you unlock new types of spells, or even increase your psi level which is what makes you a stronger caster. So as daunting as it may be at first glance, I would highly recommend taking a bit of time to read through the perks and using the inbuilt favorite system to mark the ones you like. Then combine those with some of the suggested perks to create a build that works for you. While dishing out buffs might not be as flashy as mowing down a dozen cultists with a heavy bolter, support focused characters in Rogue Trader are incredibly powerful. They can greatly amplify stats, give temporary health and cure debuffs, shred enemy defenses, and, most importantly of all, give extra turns to your other characters. As a result of this, a support character can actually end up dishing out more hurt than even the best damage dealer. So when you're building your team, don't ignore those seemingly boring abilities that help others as they are actually incredibly powerful and only get better the more of them you stack on one character. No matter how many guys you read and how much experience you have with the RPG genre, chances are good you'll make a couple of mistakes and completely mess up a character's build. This isn't even remotely a problem, however, as you can respec any of your characters for basically free at any time. The only thing it costs you is a tiny amount of profit factor, which is a stat that is easy to inflate and doesn't really matter. In order to respec, you simply need to visit your ship, talk to the High Factotum Janris Danrock, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly because good lord what a name, tell him you and your team need training and that's basically it. While you cannot change your base class and the perks you chose a character selection, you can respec literally everything else, so feel free to experiment as there's a lot of different and very interesting builds to explore. Even if you have a highly optimized team, sooner or later you're going to run into some tough fights. Besides simply smashing your head against the wall until it finally breaks, the best way to deal with these difficulty spikes is to get creative and utilize the entirety of your toolkit. Here's a brief rundown of some of the tricks you should keep in mind. You can swap between your weapon loadouts for free at any time in combat. Use fast firing weapons for chaff and armor piercing ones for bosses. Stims can greatly increase your DPS and make it easier to burst down bosses or get to distant enemies. Some equipable items can completely negate or even just greatly weaken certain enemy attacks, so make sure to dress for the occasion. 
Chaining extra turns on your fastest character can potentially kill problematic enemies before they can even act. Grenades and Psyker spells can incapacitate large numbers of enemies, thus giving you the opening you need to deal with the nastier ones. Regardless of how charismatic you might be, Rogue Trader is going to have you fight against a lot of enemies, and I really do mean a lot. While smashing through them is always a nice bit of fun, it can get quite time consuming. Thankfully, Rogue Trader has a couple of options to help you speed up combat. You can find these at the bottom of the game tab in the options menu. Alternatively, if you don't want everything to be super fast all of the time, you can also hold down space or whatever your skip button may be while the enemies are doing their turn in order to make them go faster. If you do this, just make sure not to mash space as you might accidentally skip through one of your character's turns. I have done this way too often, so please learn from my mistakes. Most of the really good items in Rogue Trader come from either boss fights or secrets. The latter usually comes in two forms. Loot that is hidden behind skill checks like Awareness and Demolition, and loot that is hidden behind some sort of puzzle you'll need to manually solve. As such, not only should you listen to my first bit of advice and have a good spread of skills across your characters, but you should also snoop around every single corner of the map as you never really know what you might find. And if you do run across one of these puzzles, don't feel bad if you can't solve them yourself and need to rely on a wiki, as honestly, some of them are just absolutely insane. Either way, they're all well worth doing as they'll give you a nice spread of unique items and accessories to mess around with. In sharp contrast to most RPGs, your character in Rogue Trader is so obscenely wealthy that you no longer have a need for money. Instead, you're able to purchase new items by obtaining a certain amount of reputation with the various factions, something that is mostly done by gifting them large quantities of junk you find while adventuring. There are two important things to note here. First and foremost, you can select which items will automatically go to the cargo hold and which will be added to your inventory for personal use. You can do this by right-clicking on the individual items, and it is something I would highly recommend you do for any random bits of garbage you run across, as otherwise you're going to have to manually purge your inventory of obsolete swords, pistols and whatever other garbage the cultists might use. The second, and perhaps the most important thing, is that all of the items, every single one of them, are free. If you have the required profit factor and reputation, you can simply grab the items from the store. Even if there is 20 of them on that list, you can grab all of them without paying even a single cent. As it turns out, being stupidly rich is actually quite useful. Once you get to the star map, you'll be able to explore distant planets by first uncovering and then following warp routes. In their basic form, these warp routes are fairly dangerous, as every single step through them will have you roll a dice to see if something bad happens. To counteract this, the game gives you Navigator Insight every time you uncover new routes, and by using this insight you can decrease the danger level of your routes and thus allow for smoother traveling. Do not do this. Navigator Insight is a highly limited resource and not something you should spend frivolously, as I have very, very painfully learned myself. The reason this is the case is that you don't have to follow preset routes and can instead spend free insight to first create a new route between planets and then another free insight to make that route perfectly safe. So instead of making random routes to nowhere a little bit safer, my recommendation will be to save all of your insight and exclusively use it to open and secure routes between your major cities, as those are the locations you'll be visiting over and over again. The only exception here are some of the planets that are otherwise inaccessible, as for those you'll need to spend a bit of insight in order to explore them, though doing so will also grant you some insight so in the end it is well worth the trouble. Regardless of what kind of playstyle you might have, I would highly recommend saving frequently and ideally in multiple save slots. The first and most obvious reason is to protect yourself from bugs, as unfortunately Rogue Trader is currently full of them. 
The second reason is the simple fact that you never really know when you're going to run into a point of no return, or perhaps just a really difficult fight. This is especially important with space battles as some of the first ones you'll encounter are far, far too difficult for your starter ship. Yet the game sadly doesn't tell you any of this until you find yourself looking like a torpedo pincushion. So in order to save yourself a lot of trouble, it is always good to have a save point that's no more than 10 minutes away. Honestly, just trust me on this one, it really pays to save. And there you have it, 10 simple tips that will hopefully make your first run through Rogue Trader a nice and pleasant one. But, like I said at the very start, this is an extremely deep and extremely complex CRPG, so don't feel bad if you end up struggling for a while. I've got a ton of experience with Alcat's games, and probably like 500 hours in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, and even I had to respec my main character four times before I landed on something I would even remotely consider good. Thankfully, every mistake is fixable, so don't stress too much about the little details and just enjoy the journey. After all, the more you mess up, the more memorable and satisfying all of it'll be once you finally succeed. Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, please do let me know. If you would like to see more, make sure to subscribe, hit the stupid bell, pet your navigator, and do whatever other nonsense you gotta do these days. Thank you again for watching, and I do hope to see you soon. Bye bye!